suitable when the problem becomes stiff. We prove a convergent result for the fully discrete scheme when we apply the new Mark beta method. Uh, and we also prove the stability of the new Mark beta method in the setting of the peridynamics. And now we focus on the simulations. Uh, we perform several simulations in order to compare the proposed method. And in particular, we perform a bidimensional simulation by considering a lamina subject to a uniform initial displacement. The plot here shows the evolution of the solution as time evolves. And in the same setting, we also perform a, um, an error analysis by computing the L2 relative error at a, at a specific time um, uh, by considering the difference between the explicit, the, the exact solution and the numerical solution, both with respect to the space step and the time step. Uh, in each case, we find a second order of convergence uh, rate, and uh, this is in accordance with our theoretical results. Moreover, we make a simulation um, uh, also to test the performance of the volume penalization technique. And in the same uh, uh, setting, we have that uh, um, also when we perform a volume penalization technique, we maintain a second order of convergence rate with respect to the, uh, to the space step. However, we perform a simulation to study the behavior of the solution as the penalization factor goes to zero. So in the plot on the right, we have uh, we plot the relative error as function of um, the inverse of the um, penalization factor, and we uh, find a decrease in behavior as the penalization factor goes to zero. We also compare uh, the time integrator we proposed, and in particular, we perform an error analysis uh, with respect to the time step. We observe that uh, the table on, at the top shows that the new Mark beta method allows to have the same accuracy of the storm at Verle scheme, but by using a greater time step. However, if we perform a, a CPU execution time uh, for both the method, we find that the uh, Sommer Berles uh, method seems to be more efficient. And this is due to the fact that uh, being the Newmark beta method an implicit method, it needs to uh, compute the solution of a nonlinear system to every time step. Finally, we uh, compute, we, perf uh, we made a simulation by considering a, a discontinuous initial condition. In particular, we choose a jump type discontinuity uh, for the displacement field as initial condition. And performing an error analysis, we find that in this case, we have the loss of one order of convergence for, uh, for the method in, uh, with respect to the space variable. This is exactly due to the fact that we have a discontinuity, a discontinuous solution. So uh, to conclude, uh, the main capability of the peridynamics is that it avoids spatial derivatives uh, and replaces it by considering an integral differential equations. In this way, we can incorporate in a unique equation uh, uh, cracks and fractures and uh, discontinuities in general. Spectral techniques perform very well in the nonlinear case, but they require to deal with the periodic boundary conditions. We can overcome the periodic boundary condition limitation by means of the implementation of the uh, volume penalization technique. And finally, the new Mark beta method allows us to have a good accuracy without using a too small time step. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sabrina. Are there questions? From chat? I just have a curiosity. Uh, why did you choose uh, an odd R in the expression of F? This is to uh, maintain um, just a second. 
Okay, here we need to have uh, an odd R because uh, um, uh, the model has to satisfy the, the, Newton, the Newton third law. Okay. So for in, in this case, uh, we need to have that. Uh, um, uh, uh, finally, uh, the function under the integral should be an odd, an odd function. So C is a, 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 an event function and we need to have an odd uh, exponent in the difference in the, in the displacement fields. And in particular, in literature, usually uh, the value of R for uh, nonlinear application is equal to three. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so then again, Fabrizio. Thank you. Okay, so we are seven uh, minutes in advance. I think we can stop and we start and uh, five points. Ciao Alberto. Ah, ciao Marta. <ride> ben, ben alzata, eh? <ride> Grazie. Ti abbiamo buttato giù dal letto oggi. Ma va là, ma no, mi alzo Dove presto. Sono davvero? Ora sono le, quasi le otto. Ah. Si vede? Sì, sì, no, stavo, siamo qualche minuto in anticipo, quindi stavo... Sì, 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 no, ho sentito, ho sentito. Thank you. 
C'è una pantera alle tue spalle. Ieri mattina stavo facendo il seminario, ce l'avevo qua. Tonto. Un po' di sano intrattenimento. Ciao Marta. Ciao. Non so che ore sono, ma sono... Ma ah, comunque credo che chi debba seguire... <ride> che no, infatti. Se vuoi possiamo anche farci i video. Dai, non credo che Ma noi siamo già qui a... Ah, ok, sono qui. Siamo in diretta. Eh? <ride> ok, so we can start. And uh, it's a great pleasure to have uh, here Marta Delia. She's an expert on local and functional problems. She's actually at the Computational Science and Analysis Group of Sandia National Laboratory in California. And so, thank you very much, Marta, for accepting our invitation. She will talk about the unified theory of fractional and local uh, calculus. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Marina. Um, uh, thanks to all the organizers for the invitation. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure to give a talk at this workshop. Um, I, I hope you can hear me fine. Um, I, I'm gonna start with an apology because of the nine hours difference. I, I wasn't able to attend all the sessions and all the talks. Um, so uh, apologies for that. And uh, of course, I would have loved to participate uh, to this workshop in person, um, but I'm happy that at least you could attend this in person and you, you can be there. All right, um, so in my talk today, uh, I'm going to introduce um, some of the recent work that we did on connecting fractional and non-local calculus, and I will talk about some of the consequences of this, of what we call this unified theory. Uh, this is a brief outline. Of my presentation, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start from these general non-local models and uh, uh, and the challenges related to these models, uh, and then I will talk about benefits of having a unified uh, non-local calculus. Then I will uh, present the big picture of this work and uh, show a summary of of these accomplishments, and then I will focus on fractional operators and talk more specifically about their connections with these non-local operators. Uh, and talk about their limits. Um, then I will introduce a unified non-local Laplace operator. And finally, I will get to uh, how we use this uh, unified concept in practice and uh, for, for learning non-local operators. And in particular, I will focus on non-local physics informed neural networks. Um, these are the people that contributed to this talk. Um, Mamikin is our von Neumann fellow at Sandia. Haley uh, is our intern. She's been at Zendia for three summers. And uh, George, who's also the PI uh, of this project, uh, is um, at Brown University. Uh, the funding indeed comes from uh, this project, FILMS, uh, which stands for Physics Informed Learning Machines, and it's a DOE project. Um, people that particularly contributed to this talk and that I would like to thank are, first of all, Mark Mearshart who was the person who first thought about having this unified uh, calculus and several other people at Sandia, uh, UT Knoxville and other universities. All right, um, I'm gonna start from the non-local models we're interested in. Um, of course, I'm sure you're, you're all familiar with the concept of, of non-locality, but since this, this workshop is about fractional, uh, I want to have a little introduction on operators that are not necessarily fractional, but where the non-locality may be um, 
restricted to much smaller neighborhoods. So we're interested in, in systems where um, the state of a system at a point depends on a neighborhood of, point, uh, of points that can be finite or infinite or very small uh, compared to the size of the domain. Um, in these models, interactions indeed can occur at distance and without contact, and solutions can be irregular, so they don't have to be differentiable, they can be discontinued. Uh, we're interested in these models because they can capture effects that traditional PDEs fail to capture. And in particular, what we can capture is multi-scale behavior, and in this context, no local models can be seen as upscaled or homogenized models. Um, Discontinuities such as cracks or fractures, and we've seen this in, in the previous talk, and the, um, the, the, the best example in this, in this sense is the non-local theory of periodynamics, which was introduced by Stuart Sealing at Sandia many years ago. Um, but also anomalous behavior such as superdiffusion and subdiffusion, and this is specifically the case of fractional operators, and uh, these have been used a lot, for example, uh, and we are using them in, for example, subsurface transport. So for all these reasons, um, the local models are definitely becoming uh, a viable alternative to PDEs. Uh, and uh, we've been using them uh, at the lab for uh, the applications that I'm listing here. And uh, as I said earlier, specifically for subsurface transport, turbulent flow and, and fracture mechanics. Um, this is the simplest form, I would say, of a non-local elliptic operator. Um, these operators embed length scales, and in this specific case, the length scale is embedded in the domain of integration, and uh, it's this parameter delta, uh, which is the size of the non-local neighborhood. Um, the integral form, of course, allows us to catch long-range forces. That's, that's how we model the multi-scale behavior. And uh, as was also mentioned in the previous talk, reduces the regularity requirements on the solution because indeed we don't have derivatives. Um, gamma here is an application dependent kernel. So it changes with the application that we're considering and determines the regularity properties of the solution. So as um, you know, the, the non-local counterpart of a Laplace operator, uh, we can just use this non-local operator in, uh, in equations such as the non-local Poisson problem, but of course we can also have non-local parabolic equations or hyperbolic equations. Um, due to the non-locality, uh, we, uh, when we solve non-local problems in bounded domains, uh, we need to prescribe non-local boundary conditions in volumetric regions surrounding the domain, and we refer to these regions as interaction domains. And when uh, the kernels are uh, such that we have support in, uh, in a small neighborhood, like the operator that I'm reporting here, then the interaction domain where we need to prescribe conditions for well closeness becomes a layer of thickness delta surrounding the domain. So uh, already from, from these simple concepts, we can, we can see that several modeling and computational challenges arise. Uh, and we can start from the prescription of the local boundary conditions, which are a clear concept mathematically, but uh, in practice, it's really hard to, to have measurements in, in a volumetric region, because usually in practice, we're given uh, surface data. And so uh, there is this big question of how to convert local into non-local boundary conditions. Uh, the treatment of non-local interfaces is also, uh, is also tricky, and for, for the same reason, um, of boundary conditions because no local interfaces are thick regions as opposed to sharp interfaces uh, that, that we have with PDEs. Um, as for any other mathematical models, we have uncertainty and sparsity of model parameters and data. Uh, and as I'm sure uh, this was mentioned already, uh, of course, the computational cost is, is incredibly high and there is the need of, uh, for non-standard discretizations. Um, I'm not going to talk about any of these today, uh, even though these are very important issues and some of them are, are definitely still open research questions. Um, instead, I'm going to focus on two fundamental questions that uh, we faced uh, in the past and, and tried to find an answer to. So I, I introduced this simple formula, but uh, one may wonder whether this simple formula is general enough. So what classes of non-local operator can, can we describe just by using this, this simple formula? And 
are the popular fractional operators. Instances of this, uh, of this formula are local operators, instances of this formula. Um, and then uh, what can we say about the problems associated with these operators? Uh, but let's say we pick this formula, then uh, the, the next natural question is, what is the best kernel uh, for a specific application? So in, in general, uh, kernels are justified a posteriori. So they're, they're, they're just heuristically chosen. Um, and so uh, the, the question that we want to answer is whether we can design uh, uh, a data-driven approach uh, that allows us to identify the kernel. But at the same time, we want an approach that guarantees that the optimal kernel that we find uh, induces an operator that is well posed and physically consistent. So here I have basically a summary of the whole talk. Um, where we introduced this unified calculus, what we call unified calculus, um, that includes uh, several well-known non-local models, including fractional models and PDEs uh, as special instances. Uh, and uh, and we, we see this as, as the missing building block of a computational framework that allows us to learn well-posed and physically consistent non-local operators. All right, so let's start from this unified calculus and, and then I will summarize what we did. Um, so the need for a unified calculus, at least for us, started from the fact that there are several definitions uh, in the literature of non-local operators. Connections are not always clear and the theories are not always complete. So here I'm reporting three classes. Uh, this is, of course, this doesn't cover all the non-local operators in the literature, but this is what we started from. So uh, on the left, we have uh, a truncated, we call it truncated because of the presence of this because the, the support of the integral is not infinite. So we have a, a neighborhood. And this is what I had at the beginning. Um, for this type of operators, uh, we have a very well-established calculus, the so-called non-local vector calculus that was introduced back in 2012. Um, the key of the non-local calculus is, is basically the non-local counterpart of, of the standard classical calculus and uh, basically allows us to study non-local problems as we almost as we study PDEs, because um, in the non-local calculus, we have the introduction of a non-local divergence and it's a negative adjoint, the non-local gradient, uh, that allow us to rewrite this operator that was introduced in the literature way before the introduction of non-local divergence and gradient. Uh, and we can uh, put this object in a variational framework. And once we are in a variational framework, we can even forget about non-locality and use standard variational theory to study these problems. Um, the second class that we looked at uh, is the class of weighted non-local operators and, that, and they can also be truncated. And, in, and um, in, this, in this case, the kernels themselves take the form of an integral. Um, also in this case, the resulting Laplacian, non-local Laplacian operator can be seen as the composition of a non-local weighted divergence and non-local weighted gradient. However, the calculus for this type of operators is, is less established. There are some missing, uh, missing results. And uh, the connections between the two are not entirely ex explored. And then we have fractional operators. And here I'm, I'm reporting just one instance, which is the uh, integral form of the fractional Laplacian. Um, also in this case, we have a well-established calculus. Uh, I have a star here because uh, there are several definitions of fractional operators. They may or may not uh, be equivalent, and uh, still there are some missing spots. However, uh, the fractional calculus has been around probably as for as long as the local calculus, so uh, it's definitely a well-established theory. Um, so, however, as I said, uh, there are several definitions, and, and the connections between them is not necessarily clear. And uh, on top of it, Unfortunately, the non-local and fractional communities still don't talk enough to each other. Um, and, uh, and, and this is a pity because we cannot benefit from each other's results. So what, what we tried to do in this work um, was to connect all the dots or some of the dots. So uh, trying to find all possible connections between what's in the, between all the results in, um, in the literature. 
So why are we doing this? Uh, first, uh, we think that by we think that by connecting non-local and fractional communities, then we can finally benefit from each other's results. And uh, in this setting, we can have a theory that includes fractional and local models, especially in instances, all in, in just one theory. And um, what's also important for us, especially in this project, is that uh, with the unified calculus, we are providing the groundwork for new model discovery. And new model discovery where these models are guaranteed to, to be mathematically rigorous in some sense. Uh, and the goal is to describe phenomena that are intrinsically non local but haven't been studied or, or considered uh, due to the lack of theory. Um, long story short, this is really the, the end of the story, basically. We, uh, we, can, we can see that almost all non local Laplace type operators can be described by that simple formula that I introduced at the beginning. So, these unweighted non-local operators for which we have a well-established theory indeed describe a broad spectrum of, of non-local operators. Okay, so this is a summary. Um, first of all, uh, what we have here is that for, uh, for all deltas, we, uh, we could establish an equivalence relationship between unweighted and weighted operators. Um, the second result is that when the kernels are properly chosen um, and uh, we take the horizon, so the, the size of the neighborhood to infinity, then we can recover uh, fractional operators, uh, Laplace and divergence and gradient from non-local weighted operators. Um, there is a, this additional result because as I said, we can have as a special instance also local operators. This was not our result. This, this, this has been in the literature for a long time. When delta goes to zero uh, in this specific case, we and when the kernels, when the kernel gamma is properly scaled with uh, a power of delta, we can show that this operator converges to the standard Dipgrad operator. Um, I also want to mention that some results in this direction, so improving the equivalence between the two, uh, were uh, were considered uh, in uh, in some works by Tadele Mengesh and Chang Du. Uh, back in 2013 and 2014 for uh, the paradynamic model for, for mechanics. And of course, uh, there are other independent uh, definitions of fractional vector calculus that are not equivalent to what we're doing here. Uh, and, and, and for these reasons, they're for this reason they're not considered in this work. Um, now I'm gonna focus on the connection between non-local operators, in particular weighted non-local operators and fractional operators. So just to give you an idea of, of the objects we're dealing with, uh, these are uh, non-local unweighted gradient and divergence. Actually, the non-local vector calculus starts from the definition of a non-local divergence. Um, and, and then you can prove that this is the negative adjoint of this operator. Note that the gradient here in the unweighted case is a two-point function. In the weighted case, uh, we introduce a symmetric weight function, little omega, and this is the definition of a weighted gradient. And as you can see, since we're integrating over y, this is a one-point function. And then we have uh, defined in a very similar manner the weighted that no local divergence. Here I'm reporting uh, what we call uh, polar definition of, um, of uh, fractional gradient and divergence uh, consistently with um, the works by Mark Mearshard. And also in this case, you see the gradient is a one point function. Um, so this summarizes what I just said. So it's, it's clear that if we want to find um, a relationship between uh, generalized non-local operators and fractional operators, we have to look at weighted, weighted operators because uh, and I'm looking at the gradient specifically now, the gradient here is a one-point function and the gradient here is a one-point function. Um, so to establish this relationship, I'm, I'm just writing explicitly what the weighted gradient is. And I'm also uh, writing the Cartesian definition of um, the fractional gradient. And um, this, uh, 
these these definitions are both in the literature and and they're indeed equivalent. So it can be shown that these these two objects are indeed the same object. So if we look at this Cartesian definition of the fractional gradient, it's uh, immediate to see what's the connection between the two. Uh, and note that here I'm considering as support of the domain of the integral R. So by picking alpha, and by the way, this is something that I didn't mention, alpha is an anti-symmetric function. By picking alpha in, in this way, and by picking the weight uh, as a fractional power, we immediately see the um, equivalence of these of these two operators, and uh, in in a similar way, we can obtain the equivalence with uh, weighted divergence. Um, another result uh, that was that was indeed in in the literature um, is that the composition of fractional divergence and gradient is a fractional Laplacian, and um, and this will, it's basically uh, a fractional counterpart of uh, a much more general result that I will present later that says that the composition of weighted operators is an unweighted operator. Um, this can, uh, there are several ways to prove this. Uh, it can be either proved by uh, simply using Fourier transform, but it can be proved by playing with no local operators and then taking the specific instance of fractional operators. Okay, what I'm gonna focus next uh, are truncated fractional operators, um, which, uh, and by this, I, I simply mean truncating the, the domain of integration. So I'm gonna focus, since, uh, as I said, the Cartesian definition is much closer to the no local definition, I'm just gonna focus on this definition for now. And we define truncated gradient and divergence uh, simply by taking a ball of radius delta uh, centered at x. Um, so why are we interested in these truncated operators? Well, the reason is uh, fractional operators have an infinite domain of integration and that they're, uh, it's not easy to treat them numerically. Uh, when we solve, when we have a fractional problem in a bounded domain uh, and we have uh, a non-homogeneous Dirichlet layer or normal condition, uh, we're gonna end up integrating an entity on, on an infinite domain. And we have to come up with ways of, of doing that. And, uh, uh, and the, not, not only this is not trivial, but also it is very, it's very expensive. Of course, most of the uh, computational power in solving fractional operators is in treating the, the singularity, but also having an infinite domain certainly doesn't help. Um, and so it's, it's natural to, to ask the following question. What, what happens, uh, I mean, what, what kind of objects are these compared to the standard fractional gradient and divergence? So what happens when this neighborhood goes to infinity? Um, so what we have is that uh, these, these objects converge both pointwise and in norm. Uh, these objects, I mean, truncated fractional gradient and divergence converge in norm and pointwise to this non-truncated fractional operators. And, and here I just have basically a more rigorous version of what I just said. So we have convergence in norm of the fractional truncated divergence to the fractional divergence and same thing for the gradient. And then uh, pointwise convergence. So for every almost every x, we have that the truncated divergence converges to the non-truncated and same for the gradient. Uh, I don't have the result for the Laplacian because uh, the result for, we, we proved uh, with Max Gensberger, the result for the fractional Laplacian uh, back in 2013. Of course, there's much more to explore here uh, because as soon as we truncate a fractional operator, we're modifying uh, the operator quite a bit. Uh, we're modifying moments and so the, how are we modifying the way we were modeling anomalous diffusion? So this is, um, this is a big question. Um, we know that the solutions of truncated fractional Laplacian converge as delta goes to infinity uh, to the solutions of the fractional Laplacian in HS and, um, and in L2, but um, there, there's still the question of understanding what type of solutions we're looking at. Um, 
And also something that we are investigating right now is the relationship between truncated fractional operators and tempered fractional operators. And there's evidence that um, with specific choices of uh, truncation parameters, so with, with specific choices of delta, uh, truncating is equivalent to tempering. And, and why this is good? This is good because once again, tempered operators act on infinite domains while truncated operators act on finite neighborhoods. So now I'm getting to what we call unified notation in some weighted operators. And so the question is, uh, when we have an unweight, uh, a weighted Laplacian, so a composition of weighted divergence and gradient, can we find an equivalent kernel such that the composition of weighted divergence and weighted gradient is a non-weighted non-local Laplace operator? So, well, the answer is yes. And uh, this result is, is formal in some sense. So, uh, as you can see, I don't have, I, I'm not writing uh, any conditions on the kernel, any conditions on, on alpha and, uh, and little omega. Um, so this is really a formal result. So when you compose uh, weighted divergence and weighted gradient, you can find this equivalent kernel such that if you place it here, uh, you get indeed that this LU is equivalent to the weighted Laplacian, Laplacian non-local function. Now, some properties of this equivalent kernel, uh, when uh, under the assumptions that I stated at the beginning, so alpha being, being anti-symmetric and little omega symmetric, the equivalence kernel is symmetric. Uh, more recently, in another work with Mamikin, we proved that even when little omega is non-symmetric, then uh, the equivalence kernel is still symmetric. And uh, the reason why we're interested in situations in which little omega is not symmetric is when, for example, we deal, we deal with an isotropy. So if in a weighted operator we have a measure of the anisotropy, or, or just uh, if we know how the diffusivity, for example, changes with x, then we have a function that depends on x only, and we can incorporate it in little omega, but the function of x only is clearly not symmetric in x and y. So that's why we needed this result. Um, so as I said in my previous result, I didn't say much about the nature of this, of this kernel because we need to know something about this kernel, about this equivalence kernel, to then claim uh, properties of the affiliated So in some specific instances of little omega and alpha, uh, we can actually find an explicit expression for the equivalence kernel. And here, if we pick uh, alpha and uh, little omega in this way, so like a fractional, like a fractional kernel, we have indeed uh, an explicit um, expression for the equivalence kernel. And you may recognize uh, that uh, here we have, if we pick beta appropriately, here we, we have uh, a fractional gradient and divergence and their composition using this, this lemma gives us the fractional Laplacian operator. And this is why earlier I said that the fact that the composition of fractional divergence and gradient is a fractional Laplacian um, can, can be shown also by using this unified, uh, unified concept. All right, uh, we have some additional results in, in this work that I'm not, um, that, that I'm not gonna present. Uh, for example, a green's identity for non-local weighted operators that then extends to fractional operators and um, some well posedness results and variational and a variational framework for weighted operators that follows from, from the Green's identity. Uh, as I said uh, with, with uh, Mami, can we, we worked on the extension of the above uh, results to the anisotropic case and we have some equivalence results for temperate operators. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this this uh, unified framework is, is really formal. And, and so we're working on making it rigorous. Uh, and uh, hopefully soon we'll, we'll be able to, uh, to share this work with uh, some of my collaborators. All right, um, now that we have introduced 